welcome to the Sway Corner for those joining us for the very first time. Welcome y'all, welcome. My name is Olunda MTW. Okay, today we're doing something extra special. I am going to share with you my daily dates, devotional time with the Lord. I just felt like I really wanted to share this with you. I've been wanting to do it for a while. But yeah, that wasn't sure exactly how to go about it. I call it my date night with the Lord because it's mostly at night because then I don't know before bed for me it's the one an hour or two before bed because it gives me enough time to like just sit down and properly like talk to the Lord about everything and everything and also get into the word. So not really get to spend as much time as I want like in the morning. So I usually make up for that in the afternoon. Is devotional time the same as Bible study? Not yes and no. Like Bible study is like you just come to just study the Bible while devotional, yes, you do get an aspect of studying the Bible in there, but it's just time that you spend with, or I spend with the Lord and it literally varies. Like some days it's like I will go through the book that I'm busy doing for the month. Some days it's depending on what's on my heart, I'll just be there crying in front of the Lord and like I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, no, no, that's literally the devotional time. And let him like heal me, soothe me, all of that stuff. Sometimes it's literally, I just get caught up in like the worship of music and praising him and that's basically all that happens. And sometimes, yes, you go through the scripture properly. Sometimes it's just like we start off with prayer and then somehow I cannot stop myself. I just continue on being in prayer the whole time within that time does my daytime like have a specific hour or how long it lasts i aim to do it for about 30 minutes to about an hour but again depending on how the leading is that day it could literally be yes 30 minutes maybe 20 minutes it could be an hour it could be a little bit longer but date nights just vary. I just open myself up to the idea that this is my time and so whatever happens within this time happens. Yeah, that's basically how that works. Um, how do I pick scripture? I really don't pick just read a scripture. I usually, I like to do a book because I, would li I like to study like the book in general and it's almost like a story and I like reading books so I would really like I really like reading from the beginning to the end and in there I'm like oh my god what's happening let me see I'm that person so I'm not really the find the scripture for the day type person but if that is you then that's fine because then that's the scripture that you're studying for that day because I've been struggling to pray this past couple of months because of my grieving situation I literally have gone into the book of psalms to help me with prayer and so now my devotional time for this month is literally just in psalms while i get my muscle back and you know like that so someone has really been helping me with really praying to god and really sharing my thoughts and all of that and if i can't it it, it gives me words that I'm feeling at the moment that I'm like, Lord, this here, this, I don't know how to express it, but this here, this, this is what I'm feeling right now. So that's why I'm busy with some. Do I have this devotional time by myself with the Lord or is it a group? This devotional time is strictly just me and the Lord, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's just us. <laughs> because I feel like it's really like a personal time. It's time that I want to spend with the Lord. It's not even a time that I come and ask for anything specific. It's just a time where I come and spend with the Lord. Does that make sense? Best example is like when I'm with my sister. Sometimes literally we would have nothing to say, but the point is we are sitting there together. We are together within that space, within that time. So that makes my heart really like <laughs> happy and the same thing happens with my spirit if i just know that i'm sitting here i don't even know what to say that day i don't know what to pray for lord i'm just here that's literally the prayer and then i wait on the lord i can literally be free and vulnerable i do my sessions every day it's literally every day date night with the lord sundays are literally a little bit tricky because there is the church service in the morning so instead of like doing it an evening session i like to do it like in the morning so that i end up with like the church session 
the church um, script the uh, sessions that we get online so that I learn all of that in and spend just that particular time and in the evening I'll just like read through the Bible or I'll just end up with like hey Lord this is how the day was but every other day is literally said I do not neglect the morning it's not like I wake up in the morning and don't say my prayers and my thank yous for the morning my appreciation for opening my eyes and being able to breathe and see and talk and all of that stuff no I still get that but that's a very short like five minute ten minute Lord this is what Thank you. This is what the day is going to be like. What's your plan? What are we doing today? You know, like that. It's very quick. There is no wrong way or right way to do a devotional. Just because I'm telling you mine does not mean yours is wrong. Whether you do it in the morning, that's up to you. It's just what is convenient for you. The idea is just that you make time every day, set time out to have time with God. It's like you would do your cell or your Bible study with your groups, your connect, whatever. Same thing that you have a set that time for that. You for your studies, for cooking, eating, watching that movie, same thing that you do for this. You just set time out for the Lord because I just feel like it's very important for all of us to actually have that time where you set out, you know. Yeah. I use the New Living NLT um, Bible. This is my, my Bible. I make notes. I write in the Bible itself. If I find something interesting, I'll write. It's accompanied by my writing book. I find that to be one of the ways that I can like either pray write my prayer down or like then for what book i'm reading and then the method that i use to study is the so method that is literally a way for me to be able to do my devotional um in a more orderly way for me otherwise my mind like gets lost very quickly so i need to i like following a certain type of structure and this structure works for me very well the soap method literally is, it's about scripture that you're reading. What did you observe? How do you apply and off with like a prayer? I'll just read for you a little bit of what I did. For the reading of today, I did Psalm 51, 52, 53, and 54. You know that all the verses that stood out for you. In Psalm 51 verse 17, the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You would not reject a broken and repentant heart. And then verse 6 of 51 is that you desire honesty from the womb, teaching wisdom even there. That's basically one of those scriptures that I like, really like, that stood out for me while I was reading. I have a couple more because it's four chapters, but just as an example. And then you then go to O and you observe. So what did you observe while you read all these scriptures? What I do usually is I just go chapter by chapter. So I'll make points for this chapter that I'm doing and then observe that and then... Um, how will I apply and then a small prayer right and then go to the next one like that so what for example I observed that really really stood out for me is in Psalm 51 is uh, Psalm 51 is when um, Nathan the prophet came to David after David had committed adultery with what is her name but Siaba and he had killed he had he had had his her he had her husband killed and then in this instant David is the talking to the Lord and telling the Lord uh, for asking the Lord for forgiveness that he has seen what he has done and that he knows it's wrong and how like taking a life is wrong Lord please like forgive me so I can have the joy of of, of serving you again hence the verse um, 6 that says and, and he says but I'm sinful you are a sinful man you and then he says but Lord I know that you desire honesty from the womb teaching me even there and David goes on and says if I could sacrifice something I would even sacrifice that but you don't want any sacrifices you the sacrifice that you desire is a broken spirit and you will of course not reject a broken and repentant heart right telling the Lord that so that's why he's writing this in a person that like remembers this type of stories more than I remember like a specific scripture it, like I can literally tell it to you because for me that's how it it makes it easy for me to remember and then if I have to share it with someone I'll be like mm, some you know when David did that he also says I might not be able to remember the verse 1 verse 2 but this is literally how I make it like my own so that's what I observed out of this whole like just 51 what do you then apply looking at all of this in my application I say it's about learning to really be honest with God because God says he wants honesty it's about obedience over sacrifice if you're wrong just say you're wrong don't like try and hide from the Lord until you feel like oh, you're comfortable now I can go back just be honest with the Lord Lord 
this has happened i'm really sorry be really contrite and because the lord will never reject a broken and a repentant spirit he says that i mean heart he says that you come through with honesty and, and uh, a repentant heart that is really broken by what you did that was wrong the lord will never like turn away turn you away and i used to be that person back in the day i'll be like oh no let me wait until jesus and i are back together until i'm like oh, because i feel like it's going to strike me dead if i go in before him you know like that but he's not like that if you go there and he sees how genuinely you are with your heart and you tell him you don't run away from the fact that it's your fault you did what you did and all of that stuff lord will forgive you so and then you put a small prayer in in that section about maybe if you think of there's something that you did that you need to repent at the time you, you repent then if there is someone that you need to forgive you forgive then if you did something and then that's you know the time that you do that so basically this is the soap method helps me go through like that helps not just read the word but also apply it to my life and also makes it easy for me to be able to share it with someone else i'll do this and then i always go back to work when i find something interesting and be like guys 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 did you know in the bible that first day did you know that literally this is what it means i'm that person <laughs> It like gives me a different type of insight instead of just reading. I never thought journaling would be like this, you know. So, but I really, really like it. And right. So, if there is like an interpretation that you need while you're doing your devotional or going through your Bible, please write it down and pray about it so that the Lord can like answer you or find ways to answer your questions. My best thing is that just let the Bible interpret the Bible. Don't go with your feelings if you're not sure. Oh, I feel this is how it's to be. Or maybe our culture says this Bible is old. No, you must use the Bible to interpret itself. The nice thing is the Bible has a lot of like cross references that you would be amazed to find. If you if you make notes, the thing is I like about making notes is just that. The one thing I discovered today that I probably will overlook all this time is, for example, um, Psalm 53 it says. Only fools say in their hearts there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them does good. And I discovered today, because I was looking at this and I read this and I was like, and then he says, God looks down from heaven on the entire human race and he looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. But no, all have turned away, all have become corrupt. No one does good, not a single one. I was like, I've, I've read this before somewhere but like in the new testament i think and i remember and i was like i think it's romans right so i google and i'm like i put the verse in there and i google to see because i know for sure there's like a different reference point to this and it's true i saw it in romans in romans 3 verse 10 to 12 that is there word for word for what is written here word for word so I'll make reference notes right here at the corner and show literally where the verse is because yeah, that's me. I highlight a lot. So I'll make the notes on the side to say, okay, this verse I cross-reference with Romans t um, 3 verse 10. And then while I'm busy here, I'll go to Romans 3 verse 10 and also make a similar note and say cross-reference Psalm 53 verse 1 to 3. And then while I was busy doing this, I, I saw on the bottom, I made a note and said word for word referenced in Psalm. Um, 14 verse 1 to 3 because in Rome it says the scripture says in the scripture that it referenced there is literally the scriptures here in, uh, in Psalms both scriptures like 14 verse 1 to 3 and now 53 verse 1 to 3 as well word for word because even in Romans it says no one no one does good not a single one it's literally the same way word for word comma everything is in the same space just like that except in Romans the scripture says but Romans, for, I mean, Psalms 14 and Psalms 53 all start with only four say in their hearts. Make sure you cross reference the Bible with the Bible. The whole goal is just to see Jesus, right, in the whole process. I literally will sit down in the, in the evening. I'll start with a prayer of, Lord, help me see. Help me see. <laughs> That's literally my prayer, Lord, help me see and about him speaking to me because this is our time it's not a time of me coming with i want this i want what no this is just you speak to me so show me show me and that's basically it. i'm showing because i'm like his eyes and like my mind and like everything must just be shown 
and through and then I do like a worship session and then like one worship song that I probably would have prepared throughout the day whatever song is the one that's been on my heart that day it's the one that I will do before I start the reading of the, the, the scripture if I end up getting to the scripture and then I will end off with like a prayer of thanksgiving like for the evening because I'm into journaling this year I literally like to sit down and journal yeah it takes a lot of time but it's time that I really enjoy because I've learned that sometimes even when I'm writing down prayer it's not really something that I forgotten when I probably spoke to the Lord earlier about something but I remember it there I also know that I also see like um it there's a lot of thank you when I write <laughs> compared to when I like I'm praying out loud there's a lot of thank you when I write like it's amazing every time I look at it how much it's a lot of thank you I also feel like there are also certain words that in my mind I know what I'm trying to say but I can't like say it but when I'm writing it down it helps so you don't have to do the writing down the prayer you pray literally it's like your, your prayer like dear Lord you write it down you don't have to write it down and say it I just like to do both for me it just works because like again I'm trying to get into properly praying again and so that's literally why I do both but I've really found that there's a lot of appreciation for what God is doing and who God is when I'm writing compared to when I'm speaking it's very weird also writing also helps you reflect a lot more because you'll think about huh what is it I wanted to say oh yeah that and then you know and the nice thing is you can always with writing you can write the prayer and then finish off later because you can always like finish off the prayer. oh lord i forgot I just wanted to say this you know so that's basically that so you can literally do whichever one you want and however one you want by the way if you don't know what book you want to study or anything the bible app on our phones also have devotionals so the bible app has a lot so you can literally, they have plans, you can go to the plans that they have, the multiple plans that you can choose, it can be 5 day plans, 6 day plans, depending on how you feel or what is exciting for you at the time and then you can follow that for 5 days and then do a devotional through that. I use a lot of markers, literally when I'm sitting here, I'm like, I have markers and because I like to highlight and I don't have an order of how I highlight before someone asks me a question I really don't have an order and like in the beginning I'm like yeah yellow would this green would be for if people are open this would be like warnings or this is be like for cross reference I'll be like through the chapter or one year and then I'd forgotten what the heck the idea was you know so yeah if you're not a highlight your bible person you can always just do see I would also like make a note there so you can do that instead of like you don't want to highlight or write in your Bible. You don't feel like you want to write. Um, writing is just the best for me because again, like I said, I'm trying to really like remember. And so that if I want to know about something, I can go back and be like, but I know I wrote it down and I can go and be like, yes. And that one's also cross reference to this one. It makes it easy for me to also remember scripture that are cross referenced in the Bible. It really makes it easy for me so that when I do go initially, read the other book i'm like oh that's true i did that was in there and I, it makes it easy for me to remember and also if i have to talk to someone and have my bible it makes it easy for me to quote because if i find that one scripture i can say we can also go to hebrews or whoever for example and be like oh yeah like 53 and be like mm, we can always go back to 14 because i wrote 14 there that it is literally cross referenced verse for verse in a sense copied you know so like that anyway too much talking that's basically the end how I spend my date night coffee night with Jesus um, so yeah so tell me how do you do yours what is the most effective way for you to do your studios in the morning are you really the morning person do you like take one hour do you do the evening thing um, is it be like a lunch hour at work because you're that one hour that you really take and next spend time with the Lord what do you do that's basically it um thank you guys so much for watching uh yeah i'll see you guys in my next video